You're in the Father's house now You're right here in His arms Right here in His love Sing this with me, prodigals Prodigals come home, yeah The helpless find hope His love is on the move When the Father's in prison doors Prison doors swing wide The dead come to life Singing love is on the move When the Father's in the room Miracles! Miracles take place now The cynical fire fades now Love is breaking through When the Father's Jericho walls Jericho walls are quaking The strong walls now are shaking Love is breaking through When the Father's in the room Love is breaking through when the father's in the room. Ooh, they are burning down. And here in the father's house, to shake your shame at the door, it ain't welcome anymore. with me today. Prodigals are coming home. Say it. Prodigals come home now. The helpless find home. Love. Love is on. Woo. Prison doors fling. Prison doors fling wide. The dead come to life. Singing love is on the move. When you find the room. Miracles. Miracles take place. Yeah.
every circumstance I believe you are my fortress You are my portion You are my hiding place, yes I believe you are the way The truth for the reason why we're here. Therefore, we ought to enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. God has been too good. He's been better than me than I've been to myself with my feet of the goodness of Jesus and everything that he's done for me. Is there any to worship us in the house? Open up your mouth and cry out, Hosanna. Are you ready? for an experience that you won't ever forget. It is the Kingdom Experience. Y'all ready? All right.
with the sound of revival. Let heaven roar and fire fall. Come shake the ground with the sound of revival. Let heaven roar. a new face up here. This is Tyler Jackson. Tyler Jackson plays bass guitar. He comes to us through Ben. Uh, he is in the band at North Fort Myers High School. He's going to be a senior and he's awesome and he has a twin brother who plays French horn and a little bit of piano so we're going to recruit him too. <laughs> so pretty soon you'll be seeing double because they're identical twins I hear and his brother's name's Alex but for right now everybody welcome Tyler. Welcome Tyler. Thank you, everybody, so much. Thank you. Fantastic. God bless you all. Fathers. Any fathers here? There's a couple of us. Happy Father's Day. Yes, some do both. Yes, 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 they do. And God be praised. And some are fathers that are in waiting. <laughs> but praise God, our Heavenly Father, this wonderful day. All right, we're going to go right to the service. We're going to have announcements at the end of the service because there are a lot of important things. But we continue now, dear friends. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And communion is especially in mind today, the confession absolution. Beloved in the Lord, sheep of the Good Shepherd, we know of his abiding goodness and mercy with confidence, all right? Let us come before the Lord to confess our sins and to find forgiveness we seek as we await Christ's return. Almighty God, we admit our sinfulness, both that which is in us from the beginning and that which continues to occur in our lives through our transgressions in thought, word, and deed. Forgive us, renew us, and create in us clean hearts here and now while we await your return so that we may serve you as redeemed people now and forever unto your glory. As the Lord Jesus Christ, he said, he who hears you hears me, and whatever sins you forgive on earth are forgiven in heaven. Well, dear beloved, God hears your cries for mercy. And because of the sacrifice of his beloved son, Jesus Christ, for the sins of all people, he grants forgiveness. And instead, thusly, and by the command of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I therefore now forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May God, may you rather, live confidently in this life as you await the joy of life everlasting. Be at peace. Amen. We have the Holy Scriptures. Two readings today. From Romans, the sixth chapter, the Apostle Paul writes to the congregation in Rome. Let not sin reign, therefore, in your mortal bodies to make you obey its passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Are we to then, what, sin because we're not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you were present yourself to anyone who obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, who were once slaves to sin, have become obedient from the heart to the standard of the teaching to which you were committed. 
and having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to holy living, that's sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at that time for the things which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now that you've been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification, holy living, and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is the eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So ends the word. The Holy Gospel now is from Matthew 10 in select verses. And our Lord Jesus Christ speaking these 12 Jesus sent out, he instructs them, brother will deliver brother over to death and the father is child and the children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee the next for truly I say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the son of man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If they've called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim in the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, rather... Fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, and not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father? But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not. Therefore, you are more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my father who is in heaven. Whatever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. This is the Holy Gospel of the Lord. We have something special. Mr. Gomez.
Lord, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be acceptable in the eyes, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer, amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Beloved of God, fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, children of God, grace and peace to you from God, our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, dear friends, on this glorious day. Wow. <laughs> I thank you. I thank you for lifting up our hearts and leading, leading us and giving our praises to the Lord. What you've done, you've, please understand, is nothing small. We enter and we come into, when the Lord is in our presence, for instance, and he invokes his presence, time and space changes. We are joined with the singing of angels. Did you know that angels are here? You see, there's something different about us, beloved of God, something different because of Jesus Christ. 
Remember in the epistle lesson, for instance, the wages of sin is death, but the, the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Did you know that you are the eternal? Yes, the wages of sin is death. There is a time that, unless the Lord comes first, that as the Lord terms it, because that's how he sees it, our bodies will sleep and we will temporarily have a change of address form turned into the post office because our spirit will be with the Lord. But when he returns, dear friends, nevertheless, this doesn't change anything. You are an eternal. The word of God is true, for instance. He does not lie. Something is different about you. Everybody will be raised. Unfortunately, of course, there's a problem for rejecting the Lord Christ. But in terms of us, for right now, the point of contact that we have here there is something splendidly, wonderfully, incredibly, powerfully different whether we see it or not. And that is the reality. You are saved from death and brought to eternal life. You are an eternal. And we need to know that because we go through stuff in this world. For instance, in terms of the word of God, so we can address that, we need to understand some about the word of God. That comes forth from his mouth. He speaks it, it is so. In the beginning he said, let there be, and bam, there was. And when he returns, he's going to say, come forth, the Son of God will say. And we'll be raised in a flash, twinkle of the eye. Of that word of God, for instance, do you know that as to Jesus Christ, that in terms of a chronology, let's see, creation down there, second coming here, and we're somewhere here, that everything to this date that has been prophesied in the word of God about Jesus Christ, every single bit of it has come to pass exactly as foretold by the Lord. And by the way, those numbers of that, of one person being able to do that, do you know that statisticians have done the study and for one person to fulfill every single prophecy that's in that book is so, the chance is one out of 100 quadrillion persons. Not billion, not trillion, but one out of 100 quadrillion or one to the 10 to the 17th power for you mathematicians. A whole lot of zeros. So the Lord of God, his word is true. So now what we wait for is the reality to see this thing that yes, you are an eternal and you're going to see that. But at the return of the Lord, the last sign that we are going to see is the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. And that's going to be incredible. There will be a last trumpet blast. And at that last trumpet blast, the dead will be raised. As I said, you're going to hear the Lord. The Lord is going to say, come forth. And in that instant, bam, the power of God, the billions who sleep in the dust of the earth, they will be raised in a flash, a twinkle of an eye. Scientific terms, that's a nanosecond. See, when God does math and when God does physics, God does it powerfully, wonderfully, and he's made you an eternal, and you're part of that is to come. And when you see that, you need to understand, and I need to understand something wonderful about that today, because it's going to be about how we will view our present and when we're dying to live under tough circumstances and realizing we're an eternal. Because what's ahead of you and me is something awesome. You see, one day, for instance, you're going to see that Lord, the Son of Man. You're going to see the thousands upon thousands of those holy angels, those war angels of the Lord, in their might and their glory as he made them coming down and swooping down. You're going to see the dead raised, but you're going to look across in there for your husband, for instance, who is preceded by his wife who fell asleep in the Lord. You're going to look in there. You're going to realize, it's my love, my beloved. That's my wife. The wife is going to realize, for the husband is preceded by her, he's going, she's going to say, that's my love. That's my beloved. That's my husband. And they're the parent, the father, or the mother, for instance. But since it's father, they say the father. And for the child who preceded him and fell asleep, and never should happen, but at times it does. He's going to say, that's my, that's my son. That's my daughter. And the parent child is going to say, that's my dad. That's my mother. And we're going to realize the splinter of it all. And then we're going to be taken up in just this rapturous joy. We're going to behold and say, wow, but that's Jesus. Are you dying to live, dying to see Jesus? The glory, the splendor, the angels, the thousands upon thousands are singing a hymn to him right now. 
And it is so splendid and wonderful and beautiful. And we will behold this thing that, remember, for instance, in our life, what he's done to redeem us, was not just our spirit, but our bodies in all creation. So when we are raised up, you're going to look and you're going to realize that you hold your beloved. You go, really, that really is what just happened. Bone, dust, ash, whatever it is that we became if we, if we go to sleep before the Lord returns. In that instant, you're going to look down and you're there, bone covered with flesh and sinew and tendon and ligament and muscle and skin and organs inside. And you're going to go all of a sudden after the, the years of sleeping in there, so you're going to go, oh, oh, I breathe. And I feel your beloved. And well, yes. It's so, the Lord is here, the joy, oh, unfathomable. You're going to see, you're going to remember that child, the little child, for instance, that you knew when you were a child, that child was in a wheelchair. No longer, he's going to be running and skipping and jumping. You're going to see that man that you knew, for instance, with no legs. And you're going to realize, no, no longer, he has legs. You're going to see the woman you knew with no arms. And you're going to realize, that's that one, that's that lady. Look, she's got legs. And we're going to be overwhelmed with the joyousness of it all. Because, you know, why overwhelmed? because friends we're dying to live we're in a world in which we got stuff that goes on but we're dying to live we're dying to realize the the reality what is already there spiritually that we can see in that we're an eternal and as eternal we've got something so splendid ahead but friends we've got it now see the world others they may see us one way they may treat us a certain way but you are something so different. And if only we had the ideas of faith, and I would pray, Lord, if you could open our eyes that we may see, see Jesus and see each other and realize that one next to you, that's a redeemed of the Lord, that's an eternal, your wife, your husband, your friend, your mother, your father, your enemy, that whatever it is, the Lord Jesus Christ redeemed that person. And one day, boom, he says, come forth and they will be raised. And critters. The lion will eat straw like the ox. The wolf and the lamb will lie down together. This eternal reality, this is what it's about. This is what we wait for. This is what we long for. Because if our heart, our faith, is turned into things in the here and now, then invariably we will realize the power of the saying, the wages of sin is death. In other words, we're not in that paradise yet. We're not at the resurrection yet. Though the realities are so and we are eternals, we still go through the stuff. Let me explain. We don't believe in, as the scripture tells us, we don't believe thusly because of what they tell us in a human-centered theology of glory. That if I just do a certain thing, and I do it right, and I do it perfect, I, I'm going to be spared the wages of sin, which is death. The scripture does not teach that. It doesn't teach, in other words, if you just give enough money or you do the right things that he's going to come in and destroy those wages of sin, death thing. He's going to rescue you from the dying to live circumstances of a marriage that's having trouble or dying to live circumstances, oh no, I got cancer. No, the reality is this, for instance, as Jesus said, there was this guy named John the Baptist. He said, none has ever been born of a woman that is greater than John the Baptist. But guess what? John the Baptist died. Herod took his head. Jeremiah the prophet, the weeping prophet, he did the work of the Lord. And as great as Jeremiah the prophet is, Jeremiah died. His body sleeps, waiting to be rejoined with his spirit one day with the Lord. We can go with the holy apostles. We can go with the evangelists. We can go with Matthew. He's with the Lord. Mark, Luke, John, Paul. All of them, throughout time, the people of God, David, Adam, and to the very last person born, the reality is, though they are redeemed and they are eternals, they went through stuff. They suffered, and they had to have a different look, a different view, a different realization of a reality that they were eternals, even though they still suffered in the current era until the return of the Lord. What? that wages a sin problem. We go through it. As a father, we, yes, we still never else have joys, even amidst it. But for the joys and balancing with the things that go bad, we still need to realize we have to look at it as being the redeemed, the eternals. When I met my wife, the queen, 
uh, who is the princess of the king of kings, for instance, and it took my breath away. I went from death to life. God gave me a joy. I could hardly wait for her to say, but though in fear and trepidation, and she finally did say, though, I do. But then the Lord began to gift me with so many blessings on top of that that I did not deserve. Free gift, in other words. For instance, when he gave me sons one after another. But as they were formed within the womb, the Lord showed me the splendidness of this gift of life that he gets us here and now, even when we see death about us. The gift of life in the womb when he first formed us, he needed together our final part, fine, finest parts, for instance. And I one marveled, and, and though one day, as I described, we're gonna do this and feel our spouses and take a breath. I could go and I could rest my head gently against my queen's tummy and hear and talk to little baby Joseph or Michael or Luke or Jacob. And then the joys he multiplied, more joys for any life. As a father, I got to behold any world in which we see stuff going around us still as a child of the eternal king and being an eternal, I could balance that in the grace of God despite my sinful intent to go elsewhere and see that, wow, look, as a child was baptized or he takes his first steps and then watch if he fell and he got his boo-boo, watch the queen, the princess of the king of kings run and pick him up and kiss his boo-boos. And then to confirmation when he confessed, they would confess their faith in Jesus Christ, and then they had their own beloved, and I have today with some of, a few of my 15 grandkids are here, thanks be to God. But amidst it all, I realized too, as they went through life, I got to see, for instance, what? They also have the tension that though they are eternals, just like me, there's a pattern. And the pattern is, stuff also happened to them. You see, as hard as I tried, as hard as I bargained with God, I'm not God, and I had to have what? Faith in my eternal God that through Jesus Christ, he's made them eternals as well, and he'd get them through. And one example, for instance, for us, I'm about to come to, but before I do, I'm going to ask you this. Have you ever experienced, are you going through it now, a dying to live? By dying to live, I mean, for instance, you come home and everything's gone. You come home, you hear news, and guess what? Yeah, I lost my job. They come and they've taken your house. You've been kicked out of it, in other words. Or you at work and you go outside and your car is gone. Have you had a dying to live even more so, for instance, in that one ends up preceding you? That is shouldn't have happened, but it did. In terms of you can't take the pain because she's gone. She's gone to sleep in the Lord. Or how about this? Dying to live because you can't take what you're going through right now in life. In other words, why doesn't my husband love me? Why doesn't my wife love me? Why, why, God, don't you seem to notice and care about me? When we reap and see this wages of sin, death thing, the reality of a fallen world that we can't escape, it shakes up our world and our life if our faith was in some kind of delusion about the here and now. Instead, what it's about is the eternalness to come. And when we, our eyes are fixed on the author and perfecter of our faith, Jesus Christ, who's coming again, he gives us the faith in the here and now to endure. So an example of that I want to give, for instance, as you've heard before about my queen, the princess of the king, King Charlotte. And when Charlotte became ill, you've heard that story, but the angle on this, for instance, is something that was learned. And in that learning, in that lesson, was she was reduced to this possibility that, well, likelihood, the doctor was, you're going to die, or maybe this surgery will help you, and even if it does, you probably will never walk again. I go through bargaining with God. I'm in my valley of shallow of death method, ma moment, while she's in the real valley of death moment, and in bargaining with God, take my life instead. See, as a father, a father's love, when you learn what it is to be a father of God and his grace is with you, you realize, wow, that child is so precious, I'll lay my life down for him or her. But there's also for your loved one, whoever it is, and especially your queen or your king. So I wish in God I would lay it, but the answer was no. See, God's answer was no. She had to endure her own valley of shadow death. She had to endure her own 
uh, wages of sin is death kind of moments, but to learn all the more to have the eyes of a princess of the king of kings, of uh, uh, being an eternal, so reduced to where she couldn't even lose her, use her limbs and hug her lover or hug her children. She was reduced to nothing left but this, raw, naked faith. In your dying to live moment, when you finally hit the bottom in the valley of shadow of death, you then end up being reduced to nothing but pure, raw, naked faith. And everything that you clung to as some kind of hope, if it's ripped away, wow, it's at that moment, boom. All of a sudden, in your most abased weakness, then you become strong. Because Jesus Christ, the eternal one, dwells upon you. What does this mean? Last week I told the story, for instance, of my father. Uh, I've told you others about it before. But now we go to part two, which was each actually this prologue. I shared it with somebody, one of the wonderful saints last week. The prologue is this reality that as a child, for instance, um, well, you know the story, things weren't good. But all of a sudden one day, five-ish, six in that borderline area, he's in a rage and a fight. And in this rage and a fight, I'm going to keep it simple and keep it clean and keep it short and just stick to the words. And this words was this. In that rage and fury, he turns to the little boy and he says, this is all your fault. That became life theme. You begin to believe it. If you're five, you will believe it. When the one that you look up to, the one who's supposed to be your father and that you are to revere and he's the one who's supposed to care for you and teach you what is right, that God intends to put in your right place, when that happens, boom, it hits you. So cut to the chase, go to the end there of the story last week, before he was coma, while he was still salient, while he was still... Uh, still strong, but had the news that he was terminal in his cancer, something began to happen to him. And in that something, for instance, it was God taking him from the wage of the sin is death, realization then, from that power of law to the power of the gospel, beginning to show him that he is an eternal the knowledge, in other words, when that life, that power that you thought you were in Lord or others, and that all, despite your glories or even your failures and your sins, when you're debased to nothing left but raw, naked faith, when you're dying to live, all of a sudden, God begins you to give you the eyes of the eternal and realizing what dying to live really means, that in Christ we live so wanting to make things right, I go over to his house. And as I go over to the house, I go to this father. And, and you know, when somebody, when you're aware that they're going to die, you want to you wanna say those things you never got to say. So I go to him and I tell him, I want you to know how, how really, truly sorry I am that I ruined your life and for all that I did. When the man who now all of a sudden is beginning to see with the eyes of being an eternal, who never ever had the chance to say, I love you or forgive me, instead said 10,000, said 10,000 I love yous and 10,000 forgive me's in one statement. He turned to me and he said, you have never done anything wrong. Well, yes, I had, <laughs> a sinner. But for him, and without a, a, a biblical thesaurus or lexicon or understanding. As small as it was, he began to understand in the grace of God being eternal and how he looked at that child before, now a man, how he looked at his life and was so raged at God, God had broken through that wall and God had begun to do something, change him, take him from that wages of sin, death moment, facing no more possibility to bargain, to become something different, to become an eternal. And God who delivered him from slavery and changed him to life. How does this happen? We go to our Lord Jesus Christ when he was dying to live. There, when we meet that Savior, we begin to see something different about him. On the night he was betrayed, he says what? My heart is overwhelmed within me to the point of death. He goes out to the garden. He's dying to live. He says, Father, if it's possible, may this cup be taken from me 
nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. He's dying to live. His sweat comes out as droplets of blood. He's dying to live. The, the betrayer, the one of the ones he loved, Judas, comes out of the darkness, kisses him on the cheek. He's dying to live. They take him. They pummel him at Caiaphas's. They beat him. They mock and spit on him. They cover him in the hood and mock and beat him and say, prophesy who hit you. They take him to Pilate's court, the one who is dying to live, Jesus Christ. And they're screaming out, those he came to save, crucify him in their hatred. He's scourged. He's hauled to Calvary. And then they lay him on the cross, remember, and do what? They nail his hands and his feet, and they set it up, and he says what? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He didn't say, Father, they never did anything wrong. See, he's got it right. All intents aside. Father, forgive them. That's why he came to make us part of the eternal. And then, and he who died, and he was buried, and he the third day was rise, all of a sudden, through him, what he's done, he burst apart those chains. He paid those wages, born of a woman under the law, to pay the price under the law, to bear our sins and become the sinner in our place. He, under the law, to pay the demand of the righteous wrath of God, which is death, he thus died. In doing so, death was burst apart. And in him, then, it rose the third day we raised through, as God promises in his grace, his unconditional favor, you are, through faith in him, an eternal. He has birthed you different as your true father, your father in heaven. He's taken us, me, my dad, whoever we are, and he has taken and transformed us in an instant, in a flash and twinkle of an eye, when he brought us to the knowledge of the gospel of Jesus Christ and worked that faith within us and beat down that wall and took it down and made us all of a sudden, boom, child of God. Dear friends, this day when we go forth from here, as we face the streets, for instance, in life, in a world in life that's dying to live and only knows the wages of sin is death and that is all awry and upset and demanding atonement and fighting and burning whatever and hurt and demanding an end for being hurt and an end to racism, whatever is going on in a world of pandemic, realize that you can see even in your dying to live in your life and your marriage and your family that no matter what has happened, there's a different mindset that God has for us that is not a metaphor, that is not something, oh, it's just a cliche or say, no, it is real. Realize you are different than life around you. It does not define you. You are this. You are an eternal. You are redeemed, a child of the Most High God. So when we go here, dear God, be with us, each one. Give us the eyes of faith. Help us to see you. Help us to see Jesus and then see ourselves too. In your name we pray, amen. The peace of God that passes our understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord, amen. Please rise, let's confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, and descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please remain standing for the prayers. Let us pray. Merciful Lord God, Heavenly Father, Father, what a wonderful word because you are true Father. You are our saving Father, our rescuing Father, our creating Father, our recreating Father, our birthing a new Father, our Father who sent your Son, your sinless beloved Son. God, thank you. Thank you that you brought us from death to life. Thank you, Lord, that your son paid our wages. Thank you, Lord, for your free gift in Jesus Christ of being an eternal, an eternal life. Dear God, we pray now that of this gift and who we are as eternal, that we are washed in the blood of your Son, redeemed by him. Even the here and now, while we still face the effects, yes, of the wages of sin, yes, but Lord, nevertheless, we appeal to you the name of Jesus for each of us right now, that your Holy Spirit 
that you will comfort us with the Holy Spirit. You will help us, O Lord, to see with the eyes of faith you, the eternal one, your son, Jesus Christ, and and thus who we are and realize what is ahead. May we see this reality, Lord, and for our faith, Lord God, then have that to override all the voices and the cacophony and the hurt and the pain and the realities of wages is sin is death, life, in a fallen world. May we have, Lord, the eyes of faith to look to what is to come then and have hope and faith in the resurrection and the living of the dead too, that it is true and is real and we'll be part of that because, Lord, we can't wait to when there's no more tears and no more sin and no more death and no more grief or sorrow and no more sickness and no more having to have wheelchairs for children or prosthetic limbs and the blind who had no eyes will actually have eyes. Keep us for that day, O oh God, and help us now, each one of us, and the church on earth, and this ministry, and its ministries, the school as such as well, Lord, to proclaim this good news of Jesus Christ, and that different difference that he makes in marriages and families, and for the individual, and for churches, and for all the world, that there's hope in him, this incredible love, not that we love God, that while, but while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Lord, we pray for those who grieve and mourn and for those who are sick. We pray as such for those who lost the, that wife first, that husband first, that child first, that parent, Lord, to hang on to the day they be able to see them and realize, that's my wife, that's my husband, that's my daughter, my son, and rejoice. May we have solace us in the here and now, God, even for those that were not born, who were in the womb, went to sleep, and hope thus because of Jesus Christ the resurrection that is to come. Heal those who are sick, O oh God. We implore you in the name of Jesus Christ to have mercy. And we pray also, Lord, to heal the land in the world of pandemic. Deliver us from its clutches, O oh God, and the devil's work. Help us, O oh God, and, and give us wisdom and as a country and as a land and of a world, our leaders and our medical people, everyone, those in, and also first responders and police, all the way, Lord, that they properly do what is right in this situation. And also for the situation, Lord, in which there's still pain from racism, there's still protesting, and there's even riots. Lord, intervene, for you are a God of God of order and a God of love, holy love. Heal this land, O oh God. Heal this land, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we implore you. Be with those who protect us, O oh God, at home and overseas. Bring them home and please end all war. And everything thusly we carry to you the secret prayers in our hearts. In the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord's Supper. Words of institution of our Lord Jesus Christ. One moment here. And our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take eat. This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Thank you. Elders.
Or the, after the prayer before the blessing, I'll have announcements. Thank you. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy that you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Beloved, the announcements very quickly. Please check your bulletin. Many events coming up. We need help with the food, mobile food pantry next week. We serve hundreds of families at a time. And Friday will be that date for that. Sign up is in the back of the church. The church's meeting of the voters for budget and so forth for the year-to-date report is going to be next Sunday at 9. There's not another way at the moment we figured out how to do that but let you know that you are invited to that. Nevertheless, we will still hold this service at the meal afterwards as well. The rest is in here. Please pay attention to it. But now, dear friends, the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee, be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. The final song. Thank you. Been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies. If you're trying to feel the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker.
I was raised in a Christian home Daddy taught the Bible, Mama sang the song They fed me truth from an early age I said the prayer, but I never got changed It wasn't long before I got to know The darkness of the world and all that she stole Broken hearts and busted up dreams The kind of songs that country music likes to sing 1611 is 66 books Talk about all the shackles that he shook Well, I know the windy road Better than the straight one Jesus is King Quit singing songs and started singing sermons For the lost and the hurt and the beat bruised and broken A tongue of truth and a heart full of love John 3, 7, I've been born from above Blood of the Lamb, washed my sins away Paid a debt that I never could have paid, yeah Now I'm a servant with beautiful feet I bring him glory with the words that I speak Well, he was God, but he took it like a man From the cross on a hill to the nails in his hand I know the windy road Better than the straight one Travel the road to get right here yeah. oh, oh. I put to death my old life Now I'm kid and even Christ Oh, it makes